Hello and welcome to chapter 12 IPv6 addressing video number three. Don't forget to take the notes and uh, submit them as homework. All right, so we're left off now. We're going to talk about the different types of addresses that are used on an IPv6 or used by an IPv6 host. Okay, so um, we'll, let's talk about the unicast address. A unicast address is an address that is sent to only one host in the land or outside all right so that's what unicast is there are three types by the way please write these down and um, you don't have to write create the table or anything like that just write unicast and there are three types there's the link local there is the unique local and the global address okay so let's look at the link local first link local address or sometimes we'll we'll call it lla from now on just like your book does um the link local address are addresses that are used inside a lan so this is somewhat like a private ip address in ipv4 but only for a link a link means a lan only you will not be able to communicate with anybody outside that lan with that ip address so if you want to talk to anyone inside your land, to the printer, to your default gateway, to other hosts in your land, you are going to use your link local address. So therefore, one link or one LAN uses IP, you know, uses these IP addresses, may have the same IP, you know, somebody in one land may have the same local address, link local address as the other one. And that's okay, because they cannot use these addresses to communicate with each other. Right, because they're in the same land, uh, in different lands. All right, the link local address, this is you need to write down, begins with FE, uh, FE80, FE8. Um, I'm sorry, here, I want to get the cursor in here. FE8, E8, FE9, FE8, or FEB. Typically, it's written FE80. So when you see an IP address starts with FE8, FE80, you know it's an LLA, a link local address, all right? Now, there's unique local addresses. A unique local address is addresses are still private. This is similar to private IPv addresses, but you can communicate with private LANs outside. Um, but you can't get on the internet with these IP addresses either, just like the link local. Hardly ever used, uh, but they are in there. They start with FC or FD. Okay, just remember that. Um, you don't have to write all of that down. Just write the first definition and what what the number has to start with. And that's true in here too. If you want to write the rest, that would be wonderful because this way you'll have more understanding of the, um, the, the address itself and how it works. The other address is the global unicast address, the GUI. Again, write the first definition at least. And it starts with two or three, okay, so that's important. The global unicast address, the GUIA, are addresses that are used to get on the internet with. Typically, we don't really use the unique local. We are only, you only give two addresses to a host, the link local and the global. So if you wanna communicate with anyone inside the LAN, you are always gonna use your LLA. And if you're gonna communicate with anybody outside your LAN, you'll use the GUA, right, the global address. All right, so um, multicast addresses. Okay, so multicast addresses, please write the definition. And this is sending a packet to a group of users in the LAN, right? Not to everyone. And remember, we said that we don't have broadcast addressing in IPv6. We only have multicast addresses. And the reason is that because if we remember, it starts with FF. So FF011, that means you send a, this is a broadcast. It's similar to a broadcast address. So we're simulating a broadcast address by sending a multicast address such as this. So if the destination address is this, you're really doing a, a broadcasting. So there's no need for another type of addressing. Um, FF02 is all to, to all routers when you're communicating with all routers. And FF0212 is for all DHCPs relays. So just write these down also on the bottom for multicast addresses. 
All right, there's another address called Anycast address. Anycast, please write the definition. Anycast address is a unicast address that is assigned to more than one interface, typically belonging to different hosts. So if you have a whole bunch of hosts, they can have another address called the same address. All right, so if I want to communicate, I want to communicate. If I send a packet with that address on it, whoever gets it first will respond back to me. So any packet is routed to the nearest interface of having that address based on the routing protocol. All right, this is really a beyond DHCP servers use this, but we'll talk about that maybe in class. There is the loopback address. So when you're paying, you know, the seven zeros one, this is the same thing as the in IPv4, the pinging 127.0.0.1. What is the loopback? The loopback is you're testing the TCP IP stack. The TCP IP protocol that is installed part of the operating system on your computer. You're trying to see if your TCP IP stack, specifically at the bottom three layers of the OSI model, at the network layer, you're creating a packet, you're encapsulating it in a frame, try to put it on the media, on the physical layer, and bringing it back and re-decapsulating it and pulling the packet out. So what you are doing is you're testing to see if your uh, TCP IP stack is able to encapsulate and decapsulate a packet. If you ping colon colon one and you get a response, that means you're all good to go. Your computer knows how to encapsulate and decapsulate packets. That means it's enabled, it's ready to communicate. So that's one of the first thing you do in troubleshooting is ping, ping the loop back. You don't even have to be connected to anyone. It should respond. If it doesn't respond, that means there's something wrong with the TCP IP stack. Maybe it's corrupted and it has to be reinstalled. All right. So the uns there's also unspecified address zeros, which means we don't have an IP address. So if your system doesn't get it, that means something is the interface does not have an IP address. Additional special addresses. Um, you can write these down. You don't have to. Just is just to let you know that if you start with two, you're probably a good idea. Yeah, write these down. This is something that you may want to use. Maybe it'll come up. But 2001, for example, that's the Torito address. 2002, if your address starts with that, that's 64, 64 addressing, um, <clears throat> tunneling. Anyway, all right, let's move on to dynamic address. Now, we said previously earlier in this chapter that we don't need, IPv6 does not require you to have a DHCP server. Remember, a DHCP server is the server that allows uh, and leases IP addresses to hosts. Um, so, well, we, didn't say, we didn't say that earlier, but uh, that's what the DHCP server is for. You don't have to have one with IPv6. There are three methods that a host can get an IPv6 address. Method number one, is using the slack, the stateless auto configuration. What that does, please write these down, okay? And some of these are straight out of your book. At least the first method, the first definition, so you'll need to know what that means. And you need to know what RS and RA is, which we'll discuss in a few minutes. So in a stateless auto configuration, your computer is always um, uh, your, your router, which should be configured with an IPv6, will send you information using RA. Every 200 seconds is sending you uh, advertisements saying, hey, here's my, the first 48, the routing prefix, first 48 bits, and even the subnet, they give it to you. So you take that information from the router, and then you generate your um, IP address, I mean the host portion of the IP. All right, so you're getting the first 64 bits automatically from the router because the router always does router advertisement every 200 seconds. And then you will generate your own interface ID. You can use the EUI, the Extended Unified Identifier, or you can randomly just generate your own um, host ID. Either way, you'll come up with you'll come up with the IPv6 address because you got the prefix from the router, and you made up your own interface ID. 
All right. So router solicitation is when you ask for the router. Hey, give me some information here. I, I boot it up, but can you give me your, can you give me the first 64 bit numbers? So you use a router solicitation to do that. And the router advertisement is when it gives it to you, right? The neighbor discovery protocol, it's called, they use in the RS and the RA. This is something new in IPv6, right? They can also use, you know, NDP is something similar to, replaces the ARP requests, which we'll discuss later on. All right, the second method is you can use Slack with stateless DHCP. Now remember, Slack only gives you your IP address and there's no and, and that's it. But if you want to know other configurations such as uh, who's my DNS server that I need to go to, right? So you could do this. You can use Slack with IPv6. So write this down. And what this does is I'll give you the IP address, but then you are told, listen, go to this DHCP server if you want more information about your DNS server, for example, and they'll give it to you. It's called stateless DHCP because they'll just give you information about your DNS server, but they don't keep track of anything else about you, right? They don't keep track of, because they're not giving you an IP address, right? They're just giving you information about the, DH, uh, the DNS server. So you can get the your IP address information from the router using Slack, and you can get the DNS from your DHCP server. That's method number two. Or you can use method number three. So you can go through this. This is just explaining what method. Well, method number three says, okay, the router says to you, listen, go and to the DHCP server, and they'll give you everything and keep track of everything. That's why we call it stateless and keep track of all the information that they gave you. They're going to give you your IP address, the subnet, your DNS information, anything else that you need. So you have to have um, a DNS server that is set up. DNS, I'm sorry, I'm saying a DHCP server, a stateful. Stateful meaning it's going to keep track of all the information that uh, that is given to you. All right, here's something that is important to remember. The default gateway address can only be obtained from the router. DHCP server do not give you who your default gateway is. You always get that from your router. That's why when you turn your computer on and you'll see an ad, your default IPv6 address is always FE801 call and call in one, right? That's always been given to you from your router. The DHCP servers um, don't give that. In IPv4, if you, well, we haven't done that, but in IPv4, you can have your DHCP server telling you who your default gateway is. All right, so those are the three different methods. Please write those down. And this is what happens on how a host configures an IPv6 address. So the first step that happens is generates an IPv6 address using FE80. And then we'll talk about this and how you would use and generate uh, what we call um, using, I'm sorry, the EUI. So for now, just write everything that I told you to write and submit that. And we'll continue with this on the next video.